Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame, and this is the recap review of the show where almost nobody is ready to love. Okay, let me stop. I know. <laughs> I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. Okay, let me. Okay, I'm gonna start over. Okay, my bad. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame, and this is the recap review for. Ready to love. Is that better? Because <laughs> I may stop. Okay. <sighs> okay. So uh look, I tried to I tried to be, you know, slightly fancy and do something today, but it's something I hadn't done in a long time. So I was trying to do like the ombre effect a little bit to where I have a dark brown leading into like like this color, I guess you could say. It's like a really, really, really light brown. And to me, it doesn't show up that well. Like, can you see it? Can, can you see it? To me, you can't really tell unless I do like, or like, <laughs> or I gotta do like. <laughs> oh, and then y'all, I'm so, I'm so weird. I was like, well, one day I plan to buy some concealer or something or whatever it is that y'all use that are like really diehard makeup people to just do under my eyes because of my anemia or whatever right so i know i look like i have on makeup in certain parts but i don't i put like two little bitty dots of the really really light brown that i put right here under my eyes and i was just like let me blot it and see what happens and so i don't look as tired and rough and all that i look like because i'm anemic because my eyes have always looked like this so yeah y'all i know it's ghetto and just <laughs> well, I want to see what it's going to look like. So I might actually buy some of that. And then when I come on camera for y'all, I'll do that. So I don't, you know, scare y'all away or make y'all think I'm tired when I'm not. Like, I'm not even tired right now. And I'd be looking tired in my spirit. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, so anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the recap review. So everybody is headed to the little uh, slight getaway. And it's going to be a big old house, mansion or whatever. It has several rooms in it. And people are going to decide whether or not they want to be in rooms with the people that they have connections with or not. Um, on the way there, Walter and Sabrina were together and they were talking and Sabrina brought up the fact that she used to be an exotic dancer. And Walter was an oxymoron in saying that, you know, oh, well, that's that's a taboo. It used to be taboo, but it's not anymore. And he made it seem like he was cool with it, even when he said, you know, his response to her. But then he talking about it's a red flag. So which one is it, though? Like, I feel like you treat her a little bit different. I feel like you ain't putting as much pressure. I don't feel like you're applying as much pressure as you were before finding out that she was an exotic dancer. But who am I? Who am I? Um, For whatever reason, I think it was Zadia. Camille and Cornelius all rode together. So, of course, naturally, Camille was in the passenger side of her man's ride. And um, she was doing the absolute most. And I'm just like, when, when is Cornelius going to run? Because at this point, he's going to get kicked off the show before he has a chance to run. Because it's like you're not making any more connections. The people that you did have connections with, they're gone. At least the one person you had a good connection with that it actually seemed like it was promising, and that was Courtney. So, I'm not understanding. Like, and you can tell that he gets these, like, ooh, you're doing too much. Like, and I'm just like, girl, you do not have to. It's like she doing the absolute most, and she crazy. And it's just like, girl, okay, yes, you want to have love and find love and you are attracted to him and you like what he gave off vibe wise, but you're doing way too much and she's not seeing that. And I'm just tired in my spirit. I'm not understanding. I don't understand why he hasn't said to her, okay, you're doing too much. But later on, I'm going to say something in particular that make that might make me an oxymoron by saying this in this moment and saying that in the next. But we'll get to it. Y'all will see what I mean. So everybody get there. And so there is a piano room. Now y'all know that Mumin, she's like a singer or something. Um, she's into music. And she's actually left dates because she had a gig to go to. 
So she and Walter go in the piano room and he's playing a melody and they have created a song uh, before they even got there that's called like, Get Right, Stay Right or something. And I was like, okay. Um, I was like, okay then. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> oh no, to, I just... I don't, I don't see the connection. I just don't. Uh, we see Dante and uh, I, Alicia. I feel like I'm saying her name all the way wrong. Aisha. Is it Aisha? Aisha vibing. And as we've seen, like, on at least the last episode, she hasn't really been present a lot. She might have had to work a lot or something or something's going on with her kids. But she had a random date with somebody and... I had forgotten whether or not she had, like, like I didn't know if we was about to get a memo that she had left or what, because we didn't see her that whole episode. So anyway, apparently they have been communicating by phone, she and Dante, and they're hoping that they'll be able to get their chance to vibe and see where things lead in person, because it's been so electric and amazing on the phone. So Tommy arrives and... You know, Tommy's basically letting everybody know, like, you know, everybody, you know, link up with the person that you, you want to deal with that, you know, all your connections boo get baited up and booed up with them and all that. And here comes the curveball. The curveball is that the women have the power to vote off a man, like later on that day or something like it's about to happen. Like he ain't gonna get a chance to do nothing. He gonna have to drive home and wherever they are, apparently is like far off somewhere in, I guess another part of Georgia or somewhere close by, but it's still like... I mean, and y'all, I'm over here talking about Georgia because he didn't have stuff in Atlanta a couple of times. And um, I guess it's somewhere in the DMV. Somewhere. Don't know where in particular, but somewhere within the DMV. Uh, so, yeah. But now everybody looking like, oh, okay, wait a minute. So, after all that has happened, everybody is settling in and they are mixing and mingling. And Walter goes back into the piano room with Sabrina and he's playing a little melody and it's like they're having fun it's, she's just pretty much laughing and all this they're laughing so Mumin came in there and she felt that the vibe was off and he kind of scooted over a little bit because she was there but he even could feel that there was tension and it's like oh, all right now like yeah. <laughs> okay now okay y'all so what I forgot to mention was when they were driving there, particularly in uh, the car where Cornelius, Camille, and Zadia were in, they were asking certain questions and talking about certain things. And I was just like, what? Um, <laughs> so Camille wanted to know, would they be sharing rooms? And he was like, we can. Like, <laughs> whatever. You know, especially since he's, you know, gonna be celibate so it's like child what they're supposed to do they ain't gonna do nothing to me you know if he's like really is dedicated like that then he has willpower he cool so then like zadia was like okay so where do y'all plan on taking things like if you know when it goes to that next level then you know we we y'all be moving in together doing like all this other stuff oh she was like oh yeah we definitely we'll be moving into a completely different house and you know once we're married and all this other stuff cornelius was like yeah we're taking you know Day by day, step by step, yeah. And that was not the response that she wanted to hear. So she felt some type of way. And she made it known that she felt some type of way about it. But it's like, girl, he's not your man. Y'all are still in the middle of the process. What are you talking about? Like, I can't, why is it that nobody has been able to say, I'm putting my foot down when the men have been the ones in control and say, Camille got to go to hell for crazy. She is possessive and she's crazy. Like everybody is in the confessional saying it all day long, but won't nobody say it out loud when they need to be booting her off because it's like, and then like, it seems as though he's just gotten stuck. We gonna get into that later, but I'm just tired. Shiloh is by the pool and she's talking to Phil because that's pretty much her main, if not only connection. Now that, you know, time is winding down, the people are getting up out of there with the quickness. And all of that. So, you know, she's asking him, you know, how he feels about his connection and if he feels like he's vibing well with her and 
he's you know getting what he needs from them and all this other stuff and then he gave her a playful answer and it like confused her and it's like people are being serious right now why are you joking and she was just like and you know he has a lot of connections and she even said that in the confessional like i understand that he has several connections but i need to know how he feels about me and i'm like i, I heard that so you don't be putting my thing is i'm trying to put out I'm trying to put out what you are giving to me. If you are not giving me the same energy, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to put all my energy in there and out there like that. If you ain't feeling me like that, it's like, why even try? I don't, I don't like one sided stuff like that. One sided stuff don't work. That's not how it's going to go. Um, Mameen is poolside also, and she's having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Walter and Walter brought up the fact that he noticed how she was acting when they were in the piano room and she's trying to make it seem like, oh no, it's not anything dealing with the fact that you have a connection with Sabrina. It's just that I felt that the vibe wasn't what it was before and I don't know what it is, but, and, and I mean, she kind of making it seem like she's not, you know, feeling some type of way about Sabrina, but she was like, you know, I feel like there are people <laughs> who are making you act a certain way and I don't know what they're doing. And then they can, the, <laughs> Production being petty and they keep on zooming in. <laughs> oh, um, Sabrina, why she buying her business in the pool? And so she was just like, I feel like you're being disconnected with me now and all this. And so he was just like, I don't understand, but oh, okay. But he let her know that he don't like the way that she acted in that moment. And, you know, I was like, child, I don't like the way that she walked off. Like she was very like, all right, it's over with, bye. Like she got up and she did that. And it's like, you should have talked it through. That's the problem with a lot of relationships now. You don't communicate or you wait too late to communicate. And then you wonder why things aren't working. And the person is already gone before you even have a chance to even try to salvage anything. It's already beyond repair at that point. So anyway, like I told y'all earlier, Dante and... Aisha are, you know, trying to see if they have the same spark that they have when they're on the phone, having their phone dates. And Aisha is serving. She has on this bathing suit. And whoever the cameraman <laughs> was, they zoomed in on her booty for about 15 seconds. I'm just I'm exaggerating, but it was a long time they zoomed in on her butt cheek. I was just like, when are y'all gonna go to her face? What is going on? They did the most in that moment. But anyway, you know, they feel like their connection, their connection is really, really strong. And she was trying to get him to understand, you know what I'm saying? I told you that I get down in the kitchen, right? Oh, okay. So listen, look, look at me. When I get down to learn, you need to understand. It's, it's, it's really real. You need to... <laughs> but anyway, they were vibing and it seems really great. Hopefully she really is here for it and everything that comes along with him because everybody is not here for him having three kids. And I know she has kids as well, but um, I don't think she's having any issues with the father. So it is what it is. So Camille had a little date that she set up with Cornelius. And so she was like, oh, I think everything has been going, you know, a certain type of way or whatever. So I want to present you with something. Got him a present, and it's a necklace that is supposed to be, like, inspirational, spiritual, and I'm just like, girl, then, like, she took it to a whole nother level, talking about, oh, I probably, I probably should have had my initials gra engraved in it. Girl, what? And he just, like, he kept looking at her like, and so now he wants to know in his mind, like, are we moving too fast? Somebody asked in production, is she controlling it at all? And now he told me, you're going to get me in trouble. He's smiling all while. Like, that's what my friend, his, the way he smiles, he smiles exactly like my friend. I told y'all my friend looks, they, they, they look like they can. They look very, very alike. Um, and so he told me, oh, you're going to get me in trouble. Just smiling, cheesing like a Cheshire cat. Child, mm -mm. you know they have for controlling. And you finna go home. So anyway, now everybody be eating. And enjoying themselves. And 
Camille has to ruin the moment by saying, oh, you're going to sit by me? You know, I want you to sit across from me. Like, my thing is, you did not have to make this humongous announcement. Like, if it really was that deep for you, all you had to say was, hey, Cornelius, can you sit across from me? You know, I really would like to just look into your eyes or, you know, whatever, and be able to talk to you instead of, like, turning to you and being all, you know, <sighs> I'm just tired. I'm tired. Anyway, Cordelia said the prayer over the food and um, everything started going extremely left very quickly. Um, to make a long story short, <laughs> there was a discussion about, you know, the eliminations and stuff that are coming up. And Camille was like, you know, there are some people, you know, Cornelius, you ain't got to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about that because ain't nothing going to happen to you, you know, because there are some people who don't have to worry about that. And then, like, she went on to say, and you know, basically throw shots at people talking about, well, I can't help that. You know, I made my connection as fast as I did. Some of us, uh, uh, Sprint and others, they, they want to run a marathon. And I was just like, girl, you latched on as soon as you could and dug your nails deep into his brain. And I don't understand what it is about you. Did you do something to him for him to just act like he don't understand there are other people in a comp and that he's in a whole competition. I, I mean like, and he even looks like he's scared to go against you because he might think you about to bust the windows out his car. Like, is that what's going on? What is going on, Cornelius? Like people really be like, blink, blink twice, blink twice if you if you need help. Like everybody is tired. They really in the confessional reading. But anyway, y'all know how Aisha is. Aisha, you know, is expressing her opinion, which is that you know you can't sit up there and you know put all your eggs in one basket. And you know, I feel like if if he gets put up for elimination, like was man, before she could even really hard to say what she was gonna say about putting him up for elimination. Like if everybody decided to put him up for elimination, she said, Camille said, Oh, I'm fighting everybody. I'm gonna fight all y'all, I'm gonna F y'all up. And and she was just like, Really? This is what we doing? Like, and so Zadia comes out of nowhere talking about, oh, well, if that's your man, if that's your boo, if that's the person that you want, you would fight for them. And so she co-signing. Cornelius over there looking like this. Hold on, I got to get my mug to show y'all. Okay, I'm back. Cornelius over there like this. That's all he doing. He didn't say. He, he didn't say a word. This moment alone is clearly. It's very clear that he is the type of guy that if his food was sent out to him and it was wrong, that whoever he is with would more than likely have to be the one to say, hey, you sent the wrong thing out for him and they're going to have to speak up for him because I'm not understanding. Like he seems like the type that would just go a lot right on along with it and be like, man, it's okay. I asked for this, but they gave me that. So I just put that to the side. And it's like, you finna pay for something that you didn't order. Like, nah. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I, I just, I'm tired. So anyway, it became a full back and forth for no reason. And it's crazy how Cornelius is so vocal in the confessional instead of being in the moment and saying, hey, this is not cool, whatever, whatever. Sir, if you had a set boundaries and said something when the, the red flags was going off and the bells and everything, all these alarms was going off, off rip, we wouldn't be here. And you would probably have other connections that actually are not crazy have mental you something mental is something is wrong i under okay people there are people who become crazy when they really want to be out there and have love and all this other stuff she be doing way too much it is not that deep and i feel like she probably could she probably is a decent person but because she wants love and she wants this, all this stuff now. And now she seems like she's ready or she feels as though she's ready for love. She doing way too much. It's just too much. And it was to the point where um, they had to pull Aisha up from the table and take her away. Um, who was it? Phil? Phil or Frank? What? I think it was Phil. Phil took her from the table 
And she was like, no, I'm not haterish. Ain't no hater in me. I said, oh, God. Because that's what Zadia called her. Zadia said something, talking about it seems like it's haterish. And I'm just like, why would somebody be hating because you supposedly found connection? And she said, if if that's the connection that you found, that's, that's all well and good. But, you know, that could have been hindering him in this process. And he might go home because nobody else has been able to have any type of connection with him. Or to see if there was a potential connection because you hogging him and you doing the least. And, you know, I, I feel like she held back saying that you're crazy and you are possessive and all these other things within that moment. But anyway, um, Phil calmed her down and she was talking to him. Dante came up when she was like really, really heated and, you know, tried to whisper in her ear. And she was focused right on Phil trying to explain why she felt the need to defend herself. And she was like, at the end of the day, I said what I said. It was my opinion. I am not taking it back. So anyway, she had cooled down and went to the piano room, which apparently is very, very popular. And I get it because I'm from a, I'm, you know, I come from a musically inclined family. I cannot play the piano like I want to. I can play just a smidgen by ear. I did want to learn, but my cousin never taught me. And it was stupid reasons and I really could have. We ain't even going to get into that. It's just family hating, literally hating type situations that's going on. It's like, y'all have more than us. Like, why would you hate? But that's another discussion for another day. Anyway, so, you know, it was a very popular room. But like I was saying, we're musically inclined. And like, whenever I go into a room and I see a piano, like I instantly am like, oh my gosh, they got a piano. Ooh, what kind is it? Like, I be doing the most. And I'm not Pavarotti or none of them people. I ain't nobody. I ain't nobody. I don't know how to do none of that stuff. I wish I could. I wish I could do what they can do. Just just have just a smidgen of what they can do. Because I would stay on somebody's piano or <laughs> doing somebody. But anyway, everybody going to the piano room. So Dante came and basically stole her away. Aisha showed out this episode. Um outfit wise like she was looking good like whatever the nightwear was that she had on it was everything and it's like it was sexy and it wasn't like doing absolutely too much and I think it's because she's not like her body isn't like ridiculously like shaped or something and like if it had been somebody like me like it would have been too much going on because I have oh lord I got booty for day like I have a whole lot of booty and it's just too much. Her body was like just right for all of what she had on. It was just the right amount of loose going on. It was really, really cute. So anyway, Dante took her away and was like, you know, we haven't had a chance to go on a date. And we've been talking about going out on a date. He brought a massage table and gave her a massage. She said she wanted her back and her gluteus maximus massaged. And so he did that. And I'm like, okay. So they had a good, nice little vibe. And, you know, he was like, you know, I'm glad that you were able to get what you wanted to get out. And, you know, I commend you for doing that. Zadia, you know, he pulled Zadia to the side earlier and told her, like, you know, you're stirring the pot. you poking the bear. And in her mind, she's like, oh, really? Oh, okay. That's what you feel. So she already can see where this is going because Dante's tops are supposed to be Zadia and Aisha. So, yeah. Anyway, now the time has come where Tommy's meeting up with everybody and he announces that he's going to have a moment to talk to the ladies and there will be one man going home and um, they can dismiss themselves and he will just see everybody else back um, at the place that they was living at before. So anyway, that's about to be some foolishness going on up in here. So the tension came out, Camille, you know, because... Tommy could tell that she had this look in her eye. And so she was basically throwing shots and talking about there are some people who feel like because, you know, I was able to find my connection first or whatever and all this. And it's like, girl, girl, like, I. Anyway, it was <laughs> like, I'm just like, what is. What is it like? And then, I, you know, it, part of me is like, okay, a lot of guys say they don't like crazy, but at the same time, they do like crazy. So it's like, which one is it? So then, when you get with a crazy heifer like Camille, then you want to be like, oh no, once the crazy come out, it's like, what is going on? Anyway, Aisha, she basically said what she said and was like, ain't no reason for you to attack us. 
for for what we believe and it was my opinion and I don't, I'm not taking it back. Then Zadia jumped in and said what she was going to say. It was basically everything got rehashed again except no names were being spoken. But obviously, as people got in line saying that what they were saying, you could tell that, oh, this heifer was talking about me, so I'm going to jump in. Oh, this heifer was talking about me, so I'm going to jump in and explain what I said. Tommy was like, all right, this is a mess. I don't even want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about who loves who, who wants who, or whatever. Child, uh, Zadia was looking a fool when she found out that Aisha uh, had a moment with Dante and that he has been living for her and that uh, he gave her a nice massage. Everybody was like, ah! yes. And she was just looking like somebody who had egg on their face. So she was like, well, you know, Dante was one of my tops, but apparently, you know, it's not the same anymore. And then... You know, um, who else? It was somebody else that wanted Zadia. Oh, Zadia was talking about Naim. Or how do you say his name? They call him Nai. I, I don't understand how he got this far. I feel like it's been luck this far. I don't understand. But anyway, Nai um, is somebody else that's her top. So now she's going to put all her eggs in that basket. Um, Mumin is not here for Walter anymore because of how things are going with Sabrina, whether she wants to admit it or not. Because it's like, girl, it's a competition. Just say that, you know, he seems like he's more interested in someone else. So, you know, I'm going to step back. I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, ultimately, it looked like they were saying uh, Naeem and Naeem, Naeem, Naeem is what we're going to call him, is uh, in the bottom and Cornelius is in the bottom. Even though they didn't really say it. We got to wait until next time. We are going to have to wait until next time because they knew we wanted to see this. Like, I'm just like, why would y'all do this? Why? But, uh, yeah. So, you know, they met up with, with the people and I was just like, and it's crazy because they had, uh, Zadia meet up with Nye and she was like, well, the ladies are saying that you're not really engaging with them and, you know, you're a cool dude, but you know, you don't really seem here like that. He was like, oh, well, I'm just, you know. I'm here, but I'm just, you know, not trying to apply pressure. He ain't really, it's like, sir, you ain't doing nothing. You're just there. Um, Camille is in her feelings and she feels like this is a personal vendetta. And so she, of course, is the one that ended up going to link up with Cornelius to talk to him. And so before she could even start to tell him what's going on, she was like, oh, I think I'm going to cry. He was like, please don't cry. Please don't cry. So she started crying. Her eyes had turned red and everything. Is this the same bouquet of flowers that uh, Cornelius brought the first time? Or is he just going and getting flowers every time? Like, that is so sweet. It's sweet, but... <sighs> that That is not the person for you, sir. It's just not. It's just not. But anyway, Nye thinks he's doing what he's supposed to do. But I'm like, you're not doing enough. Like, he actually... To me, he hasn't even scratched the surface. I feel like he's just there. He has just been there and passing and skating through. I don't know how. I legit forget that he's there every week until Zadia has a date or somebody has a date with him. And I'm like, oh, he's there. Like, nah. Um, but yeah, it's a foolishness. <sighs> I'm very excited to see what's going to happen next time because it's going to be some drama. Anyway, hopefully y'all enjoyed the recap review of Ready to Love. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Give this video a thumbs up and let's discuss this down in the comments section. All right, y'all. Take care.